Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Drudagon in the Open Ultra League. Drudagon was released into Pokemon Go last week. We tried it out in the Great League Remix Cup, but honestly left feeling a little disappointed as it really felt too glassy to put in any real work. But today, it got its second chance, and honestly, Drudagon delivered. We went positive in every set that we used it, and it actually felt like it held its own against the Open Ultra League meta. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and let's take a look at Drudagon in action in the Open Ultra League. Hopping into the first match, picking up a pretty roughly Drudagon into Lapras, and we are going to safe switch into Greedent. And as you can see in the top left hand corner, we are running Hyper Beam on Drudagon to start. Knowing that it has Hyper Beam, I couldn't help but at least try it out and see if it is decent. Now the Lapras is staying into the Greedent matchup, which works for me, as this is a definite positive matchup versus the Lapras. The Bullet Seeds are hitting for super effective, and we just outpace the Lapras here. So we are in a pretty comfortable position. We are just one Bullet Seed away from another Body Slam, and this is the Body Slam that will actually KO if they decide not to shield. We can tank any one move, we'll let this go, just the Surf, and now we're able to reach a Body Slam. Body Slam will be taking out the Lapras, so we either win Switch Advantage, or in this case, Shield Advantage, and I'm fine with either. I'm willing to let this go down, I'm going to farm down with Drudagon, and hope that Lapras was their best response. Drudagon able to farm down, we'll see what they have in back, and they have Cresselia. Now Cresselia can hit us for super effective with Moonblast, but we also hit back for super effective with Night Slash. We're farming up here, try and catch onto the Escavalier, no such luck, and they have Trevenant in the back, but we have shield advantage, so I am not baiting. We are going straight for the Megahorn onto the Trevenant. Megahorn lands and does big damage. We're going to have trouble countering down, that's double resisted. I'm going to let this go, and I'm going to trust in Drudagon. We're farming down, and they get to a move. I think I have to call this. If this is a Shadow Ball, I lose, but they didn't get to the Shadow Ball. We have saved the shields. As Moonblast will be taking us out here, we have saved both shields for Drudagon, and now we need Drudagon to help close out this win. We are going for the first Night Slash. The opponent makes the correct call of not shielding in case we do get the boost. Now we're going for Night Slash number two. This is going to be very, very close. Unfortunately, the Cresselia is at a second move here, and they have some leftover energy. This is going to be very close. Down to the wire, Drudagon able to reach the Night Slash. Night Slash will be taking out the Cresselia, and despite the pretty rough lead, we are able to get the win. All right, hopping into the next match, Drudigan into Kofagrigus. This is a pretty okay lead for us. We're able to hit for a super effective with the Night Slash, and I can also try and potentially catch a Shadow Ball onto Greedent. We are going for the Night Slash. I'm expecting them to over farm, and we switch and we catch onto the Greedent. Please be Shadow Ball. Oh, come on, it's Dark Pulse. That is heartbreaking. They farm up, and now they bring in Scrafty. Fortunately, Greedent can do a decent amount of damage onto Scrafty here, as again, Greedent is so incredibly spammy. Now, I will say this team is structured as an ABB style team, but it is an atypical ABB, where with the Greedent save switch, we're actually looking to bait out Talonflame. Something I noticed in Season 9 is one of the most common responses to a Greedent save switch is Talonflame, so I figured I may as well use that to my advantage. I'm running Drudagon as the Talonflame counter. We have... Greedent as the bait, and once that's out of the way, we can rely on Escavalier to sweep. The Scrafty going for the foul play. Drudagon looking to farm down and able to do so. Thankfully, the Scrafty did not bait. They bring back in Kofagrigus. We are going for the Night Slash here. Night Slash does get the shield, and Drudagon gets the boost. Things are looking good for us here. These Dragon Tails are absolutely chunking Kofagrigus. What is in back? It is Nine Tails. We are boosted. This damage is resisted, but honestly, the Night Slash should hopefully help with doing a bit of damage. And now we bring in Escavalier. Fortunately, we do resist all fast moves and charge moves here, but a Dazzling Gleam still hurts. Dazzling Gleam, ooh, that is not fun by any means. We are gonna be going for the Drill Run here. Drill Run does get the shield. And now this is gonna be pretty tough. Weather Ball here will not take us out. And I think my goal is I'm gonna try and counter all the way down. I don't wanna leave Kofagrigus any extra farm. We're both going for the farm down and it's a simultaneous KO. We bring back in Drudagon. Drudagon farms down, one HP left, and that is a good game. 
Hopping into the next match, we have Drudagon into Scrafty. Here I can't really switch out, and I don't have Dragon Claw. So you know what time it is. It is time to go for the Hyper Beam. We shield up, and we get baited. That is absolutely tragic. Come on, get to the Hyper Beam, and we can't. Dreadgun is going to have to expend both shields to get to this Hyper Beam. So right away, I'm able to throw it once, but Hyper Beam just not worth the trouble. We have to go down two shields to get it. What do they have in back? They have Shadow Snorlax. We're trying to get to the Night Slash. We get outpaced, and things are looking a little rough for us here. We are going to bring in Escavalier. We'll have to see what they have in back. They have Talonflame, and we top left. And as you can see, after that match, we had to ditch the... Hyper Beam, and we switch to Dragon Claw. Absolutely terribly Drudagon into Grand Bowl. Safe switch, Greedent, and we're met by Swampert. And honestly, I'm very okay with this. Swampert doesn't have a fabulous Greedent matchup, so we should be able to apply a lot of pressure and hopefully either flip switch or get shields. Greedent, always over farming. If you can make your opponent lose track of your energy when you're a Greedent, that is a pretty nice situation to be in. We should survive a Hydro Cannon here. Earthquake would get a little dicey, but they just go for the Hydro Cannon, and now we're able to get off the Body Slam. Body Slam will be doing a solid chunk, does get them very low, and we're just not able to take them out, but you know what? I am going to shield. I'm going to win switch advantage because we also leave with the body slam, the aggressive swap in Empoleon. And now, knowing all three of their mons, this works out pretty well for me. As we'll be able to get some use out of Drudagon here, as we are going to be able to align the Drudagon onto the Empoleon. They go for the drill pack. We are going to farm up and we're going for the Night Slash. I was hoping that they would shield, but as I threw it, I realized, you know what? They're going to save the shield for the Charmer, which they do. Grand Bull will be coming back in to farm down, and unfortunately, Drudagon has no coverage moves against fairy types, so all we can do is throw the resistant Night Slash because any chip damage does help. They're able to farm down, and now it's Escavalier time. Escavalier is not necessarily your prototypical charm counter, but we do resist charm, and we're able to hit for heavy neutral damage with Drill Run. We're able to force the shield, which is very nice, and we're able to sneak a counter through as they throw. They go for the crunch. Now we just have to watch for the catch here. We wait. They go for the catch. They fail the catch. And now we are in prime position to win the match. All we have to do is watch for it. Drill Run will take out the Grand Bull. And that is a good game. All right, hopping to the next match. We have Drudagon into Talonflame. This is exactly what we want to see, and this is where we want to see it. So that works out pretty well for me. We are going for the Dragon Claw here. Dragon Claw does do more damage, but unfortunately no shot at a Night Slash boost, of course. We do have to respect a Brave Bird. Brave Bird would be doing big damage here. They go for the Brave Bird. They actually don't switch out, and we're able to farm down. They bring in Ferrothorn, and I have a really good response to Ferrothorn in Escavalier, so I am not going to be switching out here. I'm just going to be going for the Night Slash. We're able to get to another Night Slash, and this should be getting the Ferrothorn about half health, which it does. Ferrothorn now at half health, and here they will probably have to throw a bigger move to take us out. They go for the Flash Cannon, oh my goodness. So yeah, that definitely qualifies as a bigger move there. They bank some energy and they have Trevenant in the back. And Trevenant with a shield advantage in this matchup is slightly scary. They are going for the Seed Bomb, as unfortunately, we do not get the same type of attack bonus with Crunch, so Crunch does not hit particularly hard. We are going for the first Crunch. We actually do get the Shield, which surprised me a little bit. Typically, they'll let the first one go, but they decide to Shield at the first one, but we don't get a Defense Drop, which is a little unfortunate there. We are, again, farming up, going for the Crunch. We'll have to see, do they commit the second Shield? They do commit the second Shield and Defense Drops. We can survive the Seed Bomb, so I am willing to let this go. We'll have to watch for a potential catch, and they catch. I, I knew to watch for it, and I still made the mistake. Crunch will be taking them out. They bring back in Trevenant. We are going to farm up, and now we're going to bring in Escavalier. Escavalier able to get to the Megahorn. Megahorn will be doing big damage here. Megahorn lands, almost taking them out. They are, I believe, in one counter range, so I'm going to shield up. They go for the Shadow Ball. We are able to counter down the Ghost-type, and that is a good game. 
All right, hopping into the next match. We have Dredagon into Giratina, and this is what we want to see. The match of the Titans, how does it fare? As you can see, the Dragon Tails are absolutely chunking Giratina. Dragon Claws do hurt quite a bit, but we can take one Dragon Claw, and we're going to fire back with the Night Slash. We are able to get the shield, which is very nice, and they bring in Dragon Breath Charizard, and that has me very worried. Giratina, Dragon Breath Charizard, odds are the third is probably Talonflame, and if it is, this game is over. We are going to still play this out. We are hopeful that it is not going to be Talonflame. We desperately need it to not be Talonflame. We are going for another Body Slam. This will not KO, and Bullet Seeds do negligible damage to Charizard since they are double resisted. My guess is they're probably going to go for the Blast Burn again. Guaranteed damage or guaranteed to get the shield. We are farming up here. We are at two Body Slams, and we're going for the KO. Greedon takes them out. What is in the back? It's Talonflame, and unfortunately, this game is over. So if they have two Fire Flying types, you're basically going to lose, unfortunately, here. We're farming up. I'm able to do a cool catch. We fully sacrifice the Escavalier. Buy Escavalier. Gets absolutely one shot. We bring in the Drudagon just to get some Dragon Claw damage off. But yeah, at this point... I mean, the game's over. There's not really anything I can do, and we surrender the match. So if you see Double Fire flying with this team, you're going to be in for a pretty rough battle. Hopping into the next match and picking up a pretty nice lead, Dredagon into Trevenant. This is definitely a bait-dependent matchup. They throw tough shield call. We correctly shield the Shadow Ball. They save switch Shadow Lapras, and we have a pretty good response in Escavalier. We are farming up, and here I make a big mistake. I forgot this is Ultra League. In Ultra League, Lapras tanks a drill run like a champion, so I definitely should have gone for the Mega Horn there. Pretty big mistake, as now I'm going to have to eat two Surfs. I really don't want to go down two shields, so I'm actually just going to let this go, and I'm going to get ahead on energy with Greedent. Greedent comes in, able to bullet seed down, and we leave with a crunch loaded, which is very, very nice. In comes the Trevenant, probably just to soak energy. They more than likely recognize that Trevenant doesn't have a lot of play. Crunch gets them low, and they have Shadow Nido Queen in the back. So things are looking a little rough. Shadow Nido Queen with the shield advantage is incredibly deadly in the endgame. The opponent knows that their Nido Queen can survive that body slam. They are not willing to commit the shield. And they actually let the second one go. So they are holding on to those shields, which is a very scary idea. They go for the Earth Power, Greedon too bulky, we're able to survive, and we fire back with a Body Slam, and this should finally start to get the shield. We bring in Drudagon, we throw a Dragon Tail, and now we're going for the Night Slash. They are approaching a Poison Fang here, and they reach it. I have to commit the shield. Drudagon, not the tankiest, even a Poison Fang would hurt. They bring back in Trevenant. I was a little scared. I forgot how much energy Trevenant had, so we are going to be throwing the Night Slash to get rid of them. Back in comes the Nido Queen. We get the attack boost, and the opponent concedes the match. So Drudagon able to close strong, and that is a good game. Hopping into the final match, we have Drudagon into Talonflame. So again, if we're going to see Talonflame with this team, this is exactly where we want to see it. We're going for the Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw does a nice chunk of damage, and we're almost able to get it to one quarter health. They go for the Brave Bird. They will be switching out into Clefable. And this immediately has me scared that it could potentially be Talonflame Double Charm. And if it is, I need to use my shields pretty early here. My thinking is... Off, oftentimes, my lose con versus double charm teams is I die with two shields. I'm like, you know what? I'll shield something later, and I don't get the chance. So I'm going to shield up right away with Greedent. So we have no more shields left. We'll have to see how the opponent responds, and the opponent starts shielding as well. We have two body slams here. The combined damage should be enough to take out the Clefable if they decide not to shield, but they do. So things are looking a little rough. I don't want to get farmed down. The town flame is low, so I have an idea. We're going to land this aggressive swap in the SCAB, and if they bring in the town flame, we should be able to kill them with a single resisted drill run, but instead they bring in Giratina. So this allows me to preserve the alignment that I want with having the town flame on the Drudagon, so I am totally okay with this. With the energy lead, we're able to reach another drill run. Drill run actually adding up against the Giratina, and Giratina is forced to throw. Shadow Sneak, not the highest damage move ever. We're going for another drill run. The threat of another drill run forces them to throw energy, and that is absolutely massive. Here, we are going to bring back in the Dredagon. We're farming up, and we have a Night Slash loaded. 
This will get us low, and I'm worried about a Clefable snipe, so I'm gonna pre-throw the Night Slash, and they switch in the Clefable! We anticipate the switch in. Night Slash takes out the Clefable. They bring back in the Talonflame. I'm gonna try and go for a catch. We miss the catch, but Greedon is able to reach a Body Slam. Body Slam will be taking them out, but Giratina will be able to farm us down. This is going to be incredibly close in the end game. Can Drudagon finish it off? Drudagon reaches the Night Slash. Night Slash will be taking out the Giratina. And on 1 HP, Drudagon clutches up in a big way, and that is a good game. So all in all, I had a ton of fun running Drudagon today. Honestly, I don't think it's anything meta-defining in the Open Ultra League, but it's actually a solid pick. As opposed to in the Great League, Drudagon is entirely forgettable. So it's not a mon you necessarily have to go run out and build, but if you want to, it's a pretty decent, like, B, B minus tier dragon. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely incredible. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry. <laughs>